Hey guys, it's Rowan Trudon with another video about the gods and honoring the gods in the Wiccan tradition. Um, just so you know, I'm not going to be talking about any specific pantheons. There's just so many and um, we could spend all day talking about it. At one point I'm going to make another video about pantheons specifically, but I kind of want to focus this video about uh, the gods in general and their place in Wicca. So a lot of people ask me, what is the difference between a witch and a Wiccan? Well, it's kind of one of those things where Wiccans often call themselves witches, but not all witches are Wiccan. Uh, this is because there tends to be a little bit of a difference in view about the place of gods in practice. So Wiccans definitely take magic in a religious way. There's definitely some sort of uh, god involved, usually, often many, and um, Wiccans do call themselves witches because they do do witchcraft or magic. But not all witches are Wiccans, in the sense that witches can do magic without necessarily having a religious aspect to it. Now, personally, I'm a Wiccan, so I really believe in including the gods in your practice. This is because even though the gods are sort of variable and changeable, I think they add an element that is a little bit missing from witchcraft in general. So most witches believe in the balance of nature and all of that, but the thing is is that sometimes it's easy to lose sight of the fact that nature is sacred and it kind of becomes a... witchcraft becomes like an object that you can use to you know, get the things that you want. Whereas I think sometimes if you take the religious approach and you see personifications of nature in gods, there is definitely a feeling of closeness and respect for nature that stays maintained. Um, certainly there are many witches who don't do the religious thing and, and they're plenty and they're still moral people and all that. But I do think it makes it easier um, when you do have a sort of relatable figure to go with. So it's all in your head, really. If you can keep your ethics straight and all of that, good for you. Um, whether or not you include gods in your practice is entirely up to you. Now, if you do have gods in your practice, uh, I suggest definitely weekly prayer and, and meditation. Um, it doesn't have to be long. It can be for a few minutes, but just to sort of have a sort of check-in with yourself about where you are and including the gods in your everyday life because they're all around you and they're in you and it matters to have them close by. So um, usually these prayers would include candles and incense. Um, choose, choose a nice incense that you like or like a clearing incense if you want. We'll talk more about those kinds of things later. But um, for candles, well, if you have a goddess and a god in mind, then you would want to use a green or white or silver candle for the goddess and then a red or gold or yellow candle for the god. Um, and personally, I like to acknowledge both uh, the male and the female divinity aspects. Some Wiccans are like all female only and stuff like that, but I think it's really important in order to preserve balance, but that's just my view. Do whatever it is you feel comfortable with. I know a lot of Wiccans have like bad experiences with sort of male-dominated religion, but I think it's important to heal that bridge and to work on that. So I kind of, despite my own discomfort, I try my best to acknowledge the God part so that I feel like I can be whole and, and be sort of healed of that sort of bad experience. So uh, offerings you should definitely have. Um, this is a way of showing respect and appreciation for the gods and a way of sharing what you have. You know, it's not all about me, me, me. You're also giving. So um, some appropriate offerings would be for the goddess something like cinnamon or strawberry or garlic. Um, for a full list of goddess uh, offerings, I'll put them at the in the uh, text part of this video. And for god, um, you have like corn or almond or mushroom and um, there are some like neutral ones that you can use for either one like apples or lettuce or, or any kind of grain is good too any kind of like harvest grain is fine um, so you know say some personal prayers uh, I have one bit that I say when I offer and I kind of have that like you know memorized but basically after that it's just free form I like to just 
share my thoughts and my feelings about my week and the things I'm going through. And then, of course, after you pray, you should definitely thank uh, the goddess and God for their presence and for listening. And um, what I like to do is I like to, instead of throwing away the offerings later on, I like to put them out in nature, like put them around a tree or something so that the animals can enjoy it. And, you know, it sort of like goes back to the earth rather than wherever it is all the trash goes in a dump somewhere. Um, so that's just my preferences, but I think that it's really important to um, be sure that whatever you do, you do it with consciousness and you do it for a reason. So um, don't forget your weekly prayers. They're really important to stay connected and it's a good way also to forge a connection with the goddess and God if you don't feel like there's a lot of divinity in your life. Okay, now here comes the big question. How do you see divinity? Well, there are a lot of answers to this question. I know some people might be watching this video and thinking, okay, I'm not really big into this whole goddess and god thing. I don't really subscribe to the idea of, you know, these, these godly beings. Well, if that's the case, I mean, there is, no matter what, something bigger out there. I mean, when you really think about it, goddesses and gods and all that, they're all representations of these really big forces of the universe or, or really strong ideas. So really, it's all just metaphor. It's what works for you. It's personal. So if you don't subscribe to the idea of, of a goddess or god, pray to the universe. Pray to whatever it is that keeps the sun rising and the tides flowing and, and the moon orbiting the earth. I mean, whatever it is that is keeping all of us together in this cycle and you know, maintains that momentum, that first spark, whatever it is you think that is, pray to that and be connected to it and, and feel it on the inside. I mean, know that when you're praying, you're putting that out there in the universe and it is being heard and you're hearing yourself. And that's the most important part is, is being able to use the medium of divinity to connect with that really divine part of yourself. So um, don't worry if you don't feel a strong connection right away to the goddess or the god or whatever. Um, it takes time, you know. Part of the thing about Wicca is that practicing is really what makes things work. You have to try and try and try until it becomes a natural part of you, until you learn it like riding a bicycle. So if you don't feel comfortable right away, that's okay. It'll come to you in time or, you know, maybe it won't and you're just going to be praying to the universe and that's your thing. Um, either way, it's totally fine. Um, what helped me out in the beginning was definitely not naming my goddess or god right away. I sort of subscribed to this idea that, you know, in time, you know, sort of a manifestation of a goddess or god may come to you. Um, and, and may reveal themselves to you in a way that you finally feel comfortable saying, yes, this is the god or goddess that I connect to. Um, don't force it upon yourself and certainly um, don't rush into it. It's totally fine to just sort of keep them as concepts and sort of honor them in your own way before jumping straight into a pantheon. Um, personally, I'm more into the Celtic pantheon than anything else, but again, this is really variable. Um, some other things before we conclude this video is um, something I forgot last time. All of these points that I'm talking about, um, they're very well described in this book, uh, Wicca, A Guide for the Solitary Practitioner, uh, by Scott Cunningham. And he's really great because he talks about these ideas in a really simple and relatable and meaningful way. So I highly recommend Scott Cunningham. He's great. The other book I recommend is True Magic, A Beginner's Guide uh, by Amber Kate. And uh, this is also a good book because it talks a lot about ethics and a lot about different kinds of magic. And uh, what I like about it is that it also has these exercises at the end of the chapter to make sure that you've mastered the concepts and it gives you something to try out and practice. So uh, I recommend those books. Uh, also, the uh, prayer that I say during my uh, usual prayers and all the offering types and stuff like that. That'll all be in the text part of this uh, video. So um, thank you guys so much for sticking around and uh, hopefully I'll post another video soon, probably in the next few minutes. So 
Um, see you again and blessed be.